students welcome to legacy as academy today we are going to discuss about one of the most important climatic regions of the world which we popularly known as savanna type of climate and since a large part of this climate lies in the country which is called the sudan many times it is also referred as sudan type of climate by the geographers so let us try to understand what are the main characteristics of this particular kind of climate but before that let us have a brief introduction about savanna or sudan climate so apart from these two common name the climate geographically is also referred as tropical wet and dry climate the reason is very simple because this climate is characterized by a distinct wet season which is followed by the dry season and since as far as the latitudes are concerned this zone of climate lies in the tropical areas and that is why it is called as tropical wet and dry climate second important point we have to understand that it is an example of transitional type of climate which can also be called as marginal climate or acting as a boundary between two distinct ecological zone on the southern side we have equatorial forest and on the northern side of savanna climate we have the hot desert that means if you talk about the savanna climate we can basically characterize it like this on the this is if your this is your savanna type of climate and on the northern part of savanna type of climate you have the hot desert and as we know that in the case of africa it is the vast the largest desert of the world sahara desert on the other hand in the southern region of savanna we have the equatorial forest because here rainfall is quite higher the overall we can say the temperature is very very high throughout the year and thus we have abundant vegetation abundant dense forest rainforest we find here so that is why it is called as transitional type of climate third important point we have to keep in mind that this particular climate is restricted to the tropical zone that is zone lying between tropic of cancer 23 and half degrees north of latitude in the northern hemisphere to 23 and half degrees south of latitude in the southern hemisphere which we know as tropic of capricorn and as we know that it is extensively developed in the country of africa which is sudan in the west africa and this is where dry and wet climates are most distinct and therefore we call it as a sudan climate not only that it is also characterized with vast expanse of grasses so when we were we talk about term savanna or whenever someone talk about term savanna the picture that comes into our mind is a vast grassland and that is why this is also many time referred as savanna grassland now if you talk about the distribution of this particular type of climate so in northern hemisphere we have two continents where we can see this particular type of climate for example in the south america we have llanos which is a grassland region situated in the orinoco river basin now this orinoco river basin passes through two countries one we have is venezuela while the other country is colombia so llanos grassland of venezuela and colombia in the orinoco river basin is one of the most important part of savanna type of grassland on the other hand as you move more slightly to the east we also have another grassland that is known locally by the name of campos in the brazilian highland so llanos and campos are part of savanna type of climate in the south america now if we come to the african continent so basically if you look at the african continent we have a part of climate lies in the west africa where we have the vast expanse in sudan and then finally it curves southward toward east africa and then also it extends to the southern africa just slightly to the north of tropic of capricorn to give you a better idea if you look at this particular map which shows the distribution of savanna type of climate we can clearly see here in this south american continent just slightly to the north of equator we have llanos grassland in venezuela and colombia and slightly to the south of equator and to the north of tropic of Capri uh, tropic of capricorn we have campos grassland in the brazil highlands similarly in africa we can see this is the distribution zone where in the west africa in sudan we have distribution of this particular climate then as we can see this zone takes a kind of 90 degree turn and then it extend all the way to the western africa as well as the southern part of africa where salisbury and kano are two major point where the climatic characteristic of this particular climate is measured not only that the climate also is found in southern hemisphere however it is not so much uh, what you can say extensive in nature in southern hemisphere it is found only in a narrow strip of northern australia to the south of the monsoon strip of australia for example if you look at the distribution of the savanna type of climate this is the distribution here slightly situated to the north and slightly to the south of tropic of capricorn in the north western part of australia 
we have savanna type of climate. So this is overall global distribution of this climatic region. Now the most important point which we have to keep in mind that what are the major climatic characteristics of this particular region. So first of all, if you talk about the temperature, in the lowland regions of savanna, temperature can vary somewhere between 20 to 32 degrees Celsius if you look at a monthly average. On the other hand, annual average temperature range is somewhere, annual average temperature is somewhere about 18 degrees Celsius. If you talk about the hottest month, then incidentally, coincidentally, it is the April month just before the beginning of rainy season, which observes highest temperature. To keep in mind, we have to understand that it is not the month of June where the sunlight is very strong. Rather, it is the month of April that is having highest temperature. On the other hand, in Southern Hemisphere, as we know that the seasons are reversed. So it is the month of October where you will find the highest temperature or maximum temperature in the savanna climatic region. In the night time, we know that what happens since this is a vast grassland area and also the skies remain relatively cloudless in the night. Due to this cloudless clear sky, the loss of heat from the earth's surface via long wave terrestrial radiation is quite higher. And that is why nighttime temperature in savanna region also drops at a very fast rate. And temperature many times drop to such an extent that it goes to a low degree where frost formation also is observed. So this is something we can understand is a unique characteristic of savanna climate. And obviously because of this region, in the daytime, the land mass is getting strongly heated. The temperature rises significantly. In the nighttime, as temperature drops very suddenly, we also have very low temperature and thus it gives extreme diurnal range of temperature in savanna region. Diurnal range of temperature simply means that within 24 hour period, what is the maximum temperature minus what is the minimum temperature that has been recorded. So this is extreme in the case of savanna climate. So this is all about the temperature characteristic of savanna. The second most important climatic characteristic which we have to study about is the rainfall of savanna. So as we have discussed before as well, that in savanna we have two distinct seasons. The hot summer season is characterized by wet spells of rainfall, while the cold season, cool season is characterized by dry spell. That means it is, there is absence of rainfall. So if talk about rainfall, average annual rainfall in the savanna climatic region lies somewhere between 100 centimeter to 150 centimeters. The maximum rainfall happens in the northern hemisphere between the month of May and September, while in the southern hemisphere, the maximum rainfall happens in the month of October and March. However, one point which we have to keep in mind is that as we move from the south to the north, that means as we are moving from the savanna region toward the desert region, toward the desert region, we see the length of the rainy season, the length of the rainy month, as well as the amount of average rainfall both decreases. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. And obviously, reverse will be true. If you move from savanna to the south, that means if you move from savanna to the equatorial region, both the length of the rainy season as well as the duration or the amount of rainfall both will increase. And that is why we have discussed in the beginning that savanna is a kind of transient climate between equatorial rainforest and the northern desert, the tropical deserts. The third important parameter that uh, that is helped to understand the climate is the flow of the wind or movement of wind. So as far as the savanna region is concerned, this area is characterized by the flow of trade winds. And as we know that we have two types of trade wind, if we talk about the northern and southern hemisphere, if this is our zero degree equator, then in the northern hemisphere, this area between Tropic of Cancer and Equator is characterized by what we call as northeasterly trade winds. On the other hand, if you look at the region between Tropic of Capricorn and Equator in the Southern Hemisphere, this area is characterized by Southeasterly trade winds. So the entire savanna region, since it lies within this particular zone, so it is a characteristic characterized by the trade winds, which generally blows from the eastern direction to the western direction. Sometime in the month of uh, summer season, we have very strong dry and hot wind that blows from the western part of Sahara toward the east western coast of Africa, especially around the Guinea coast of Africa in the western in the eastern Atlantic. And these winds, since they are very hyper dry wind, very hot wind, they provide a sigh of relief to the people of Guinea from the oppressive humid and hot weather. And that is why these winds are called as doctor winds. And Hermitan is a local term that translates into doctor. Third point which you have to keep in mind is there also a change in the season, a change in the flow of wind between onshore versus offshore. 
Now let's try to understand this in more detail. So as you can see, we have two different pictures of Africa. This is your savanna region. So as you can see that during the summer season, as the sun moves towards tropical cancer, the intertropical convergence zone shifts to the north from the equator. And thus somewhere in the month of May, June, ITCZ is lying around this point. So due to this, what happened? ITCZ is a point of low pressure or area of low pressure. It attracts the wind from the oceanic areas, from the Atlantic Ocean. And since these winds are coming from the Atlantic Ocean, obviously they will carry huge amount of water vapor, huge amount of moisture with them. And thus, they causes rainfall in the western coast of Africa. However, this rainfall is very short duration because once again, sun moves to the Tropic of Cap Capricorn or equator, ITCJ shift back toward equator and during that time the entire region actually gets covered by the offshore wind that is moving away from the shore and since these winds are originating in the dry desert region they are devoid of any kind of moisture and thus did not cause any kind of rainfall thus what we can say that in summer season we have in summer season we have the uh, wind that is moving from the ocean to the land that means these are the onshore winds and that is why they causes rainfall while in the winter season the wind is moving from the land to sea which is called as offshore wind which causes dry spell season in the savanna. The third point we have to talk about now is the natural vegetation in the savanna. So savanna has a very distinct kind of natural vegetation which many geographers have said or called as bush felt or the parkland topography. Parkland topography basically means this kind of topography as you can see in this particular picture. You have large tall grasses as you can see here and there and there here and there you can see small to medium sized trees are scattered. So that is what something which can call as parkland. It look like a park where we have large vast expanse of grassland and scat trees are scattered here and there wherever rainfall is higher or wherever you have the water bodies. Second point we have to keep in mind is that savanna grassland is characterized by its deciduous trees and as you know during the cold uh, season since there is a lack of water in the savanna region the deciduous trees basically shed their leaves for few months to conserve water uh, to conserve the moisture or to conserve water in them. Some other unique kind of trees develop in savanna for example we have baobab trees or also called as bottle trees. So these trees look something like this as you can see they have very very wide trunk and as you can see they have very less or scanty leaves at the top and also their crown is less developed. So this is a kind of adaptive mechanism that these trees have developed to survive in the less rainfall condition, less water condition of the savanna region. In this wide trunk that you see here tree basically store water which they use during the drier spell which they use during the drier period of the climate so that is what we can call as baobab tree or bottle tree third important characteristic of natural vegetation savanna is that here the grasses are very tall most of time grasses reach as high as 10 to 12 feet and many times it is found as high as 12 feet and since they are very very tall grasses these are also referred as elephant grasses the root of these grasses go very very deep below the ground surface to search for water or uh, in the search of water. However, when there is a dry season, the entire area looks kind of scorched, the grasses turn yellow because of lack of rainfall. However, when the spring arrives and just when the rainfall begins, grasses again spring up and basically turns green and the entire vast stretch of savanna looks very green in nature. So that is why we have this kind of grasses that you find here. If you look at this particular picture, you can see these are the grasses during the rainy season. They are very, very tall. If you compare this with the height of this particular person and these are very tall grasses. However, one point we have to keep in mind that despite their high height, these grasses lack nutrition because there is a lack of nutrients in the savanna soil and thus these are not very nutritious grasses despite having very tall height. So these are some of the important points we have to keep in mind as far as the natural vegetation of the savanna is concerned. The next point we can talk about is obviously savanna is well known for its wildlife diversity and here you will find a large number of animals both herbivorous as well as carnivorous. Not only that in the marshy and the water bodies area of savanna you will also find large number of reptiles such as crocodiles, alligators, monitor lizards etc. And since there is a large number of carnivorous and herbivorous animals that you find that is found in savanna, in earlier time this area was popular among rich people for as a hunting ground which also is done in these days illegally and some places legally. So that is why because of the hunting that was very popular in these areas, these 
area of savanna is also called as big game region or a big game country to give you a hint of the major animals that you can find in the savannas or obviously the big five of savannas which are the rhinoceros the elephants the giraffe the lions and the leopards and apart from that we also have many such animals as you can see spotted hyenas are there we have herbivores such as gazelles impalas deers and different varieties of uh, we can say crocodiles alligators are there we have a lot of different different types of birds you will find as well as you have hippopotamus that also comes in the big five category of the african savanna now coming to the human economy that how the people who are living in savanna region survived so first of all we have three major kind of economic activity that can be identified or associated with the savanna region the first of them is nomadic pastoralism this is something that is that actually is uh, done by the Maasai tribe, which is living in the Kenya and also extending to the Tanzania region. So the Maasai tribe living in the Kenya and Tanzania, they practice nomadic pastoralism. Nomadic pastoralism refers to a system where the Maasai tribes basically are dependent upon their cattle and also they keep on moving from one place to another place in the search of grasses, in search of fodder and food. For example, if you look, this is the Maasai tribe and they basically depend on large number of cattle and especially the milk as well as the blood of the cow, well, blood of the cattle are also consumed and is part of their regular diet as far as the Maasai tribe is concerned. The second major kind of economy you can see here is the settled agriculture is also being practiced in the highland areas such as in Nigeria. And here we have Hausa tribe, as you can see in this particular picture, this is the Hausa tribe. So these tribes are settled cultivators, settled agriculture and are engaged in crop production. And Maasai tribe and Hausa tribe are also engaged in some sort of uh, exchange of the materials. For example, the cattle based products or dairy based products are given by Maasai tribe to Hausa tribe and the agriculture products are then given from the Hausa tribe to the Maasai tribe. However, the agriculture is not a very, what you can say, uh, profit making enterprise here because the savanna region obviously due to distinct dry and wet seasons suffer from a severe spell of drought. And also in the short period of time, when you have a heavy rainfall, leaching occurs in the upper layer of the savanna soil. Due to this, most of nutrients are generally washed away. And that is why there's lack of nutrients and the yield of the crops will be obviously very, very less. Third, if you look at the southern hemisphere in the countries such as Northern Australia, and even in the Eastern Brazil and Central Africa, plantation agriculture, for example, uh, plantation agriculture of crops such as coffee, of uh, tobaccos, of sugarcane are also being practiced in this particular regions. And many times geographers believe that savanna has a lot of potential as far as the agriculture is concerned, which you should try to utilize. However, one point we have to keep in mind that despite there is a large number of cattle that are present in the savanna region, despite the elephant grasses that cover the entire expanse of savanna, there is a lack of dairy based industry. And one of the most important reason, major region which causes here lack of dairy based industry is as we discussed, the grasses definitely are tall, but they lack nutrition. And since they lack nutrition, the cattle that are feeding upon these grasses cannot produce huge quantity or huge amount of milk. To give you an idea, in temperate grassland, average yield of a cow in as far as the milk production is concerned is somewhere between 15 to 20 liters per day. But in the same time, if you look at the savanna grassland, an uh, average production or milk production of a cow is 1 to 3 liters per day. So, as we can see, the milk yield is very, very less. There is a lack of uh, sufficient amount of food. There is a poverty that is prevalent everywhere. And that is why the dairy-based industry has not developed in the savanna grassland. While it is a very popular enterprise as far as the temperate grasslands of the Europe or the Australia and New Zealand plains are concerned. So this is all about the economy of the savanna. So I hope you understood about the major features and characteristics of savanna type of climate. We'll come back soon with the next climatic type. Till then, take care. Thank you very much.